Okay. What I want to do today is I want to calculate, say, the mass of a planet. You ever think how they how do they know the mass of the Earth? How do they know the mass of the Sun? But we want to find well, how how would you do that? Now, one two things you have to know to know the mass of uh, of the Sun by the mass of the Earth. You have to know how fast satellite is going around the Earth if we're doing the mass of the Earth. How fast is that satellite moving around the Earth in meters per second? And also, what's the rate of motion? In other words, the distance from the, the satellite to the center of the Earth. If you know those two things, you can get the mass of the Earth. It's also true you can do the same thing to get the mass of the Sun, if you know a few things about that. So with that, let's get started. <clears throat> Excuse me. The equation we're going to use today is going to be right here. Here's the big equation. It's for circular motion. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. It's summation of centripetal force equals m times a of c. And right now that means gobbledygook to you, which it probably should. But to help you understand that equation, this is for circular motion. Circular motion. We're going to do one that has to do with linear motion. This can be a little bit more familiar to you. Linear motion. We're going to do one dimensional motion left or right. Let's say, and here's the equation for that. All it is, if you look at this, do you recognize this equation? It's just what? Newton's second law, correct? Okay, well, let's just do a little demonstration of this thing. Because if you understand how this thing here works, then the equation on the left will make a lot more sense to you, or more sense to you anyway. Well, first of all, let's say we have a mass. Let's say the mass is going to be, make it simple, two kilograms. I'll use one sig here, just to make it all simple. It's two kilograms. And that with the mass. And let's say we want to get the acceleration. Now, we may not get the acceleration in the next problem. But I want you to understand how the base, how, how, the, how the mechanics of the equation work. Look it up. Now, and let's say, now what does this right here mean? This summation of forces. Right? What the, all that means is really is the net force. That's all that really means, all right? The net force, okay? And uh, when you say summation, you mean, like in this example, if the, if the force to the right you add it, to the left you subtract it. That's what summation means. All forces to, to the right you add, all forces to the left you subtract. Here's a simple example. Let's see how we'll match right here. And I got one force this direction. We'll call that uh, four newtons. And I got another force this direction. We'll call that two newtons. And I got one opposing the motion. One right here. We're going to call that, let's call that uh, two newtons as well. All right. Now. What's the net force that on that thing then? Well, the net force is going to be four plus two minus two. The net force is going to be what? Four newtons, isn't it? That's the net force, right? So we just did, we got this side of the equation right there, the net force can be four newtons. Well, if I know what the net force is and I know what the mass is according to that equation, I can't get the acceleration, can't I? I'm going to just do this, you know, summation of forces equals m times a and Divide the M over, answer your masses out, and then you have your acceleration equals summation of force, which is going to be four, and divide by the mass, which is going to be two. Therefore, what's your acceleration? Four divided by two is what? Two. What are the units for acceleration? Meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. All right. We just got our acceleration. And that's a simple way that that equation works, correct? <laughs> Now, let's look at the other equation then, all right? Now we understand how to kind of understand what we're doing here. This, now, that was for linear motion. Now, what about circular motion? Well, it says summation of centripetal forces are radial forces. When we say centripetal forces, radial forces, we mean a force along the radius, okay, from the, from the object to the point that it's rotating about, right? That's we call it a force along that radius will be radial forces. Now. And, on, and we'll demonstrate that and go into more detail in a minute. But whatever that is, it does equal mass times, times the centripetal acceleration. Now, what in the world? Let's say if we're going constant speed in a circle, how do you have acceleration? You're not speeding up. You're not slowing down. So what's going on there? Let's take a look at this. Here's a little simple example right here. Let's say this, this is a view from above. It's like a tether ball. You got a ball right here, and it's going around, Okay. We're going to put this thing out in space all by itself. So we'll just keep it really simple on the force one, okay? 
Well, if there's a string on that ball, let's say it's about a pole. Well, then the force is along the radius. Here's the radius right here. It's R, correct? And as that thing goes around, that 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 string keeps that thing going around in a circle, right? It pulls on because strings pull. They don't push, do they? The tension is going to be towards the center, correct? It's a tension. Dt. And as it goes around, it's still tension is always towards the center, isn't it? If I do it over here, then here's the radius right here. Tension is still going to be towards the center, isn't it? Tension is their only force in this thing. And here's the deal. When you do centripetal forces, summation of centripetal forces, you look along the radius where the object is at the time. And if the force is towards the center, you add it. If it's away from center, you subtract it. Now, I've kept it simple. Well, the only force on that thing is going to be the force of tension. It's always towards the center. So we're going to add it, right? So T goes on this side of the equation. Now, stop for a minute. And now that's centripetal acceleration. Why is there an acceleration again? Because it's not changing speed, is it? But let me ask you a simple question. Is the net force on that ball as it goes around a circle, is it zero? No, there's tension on there, isn't it? The net force is not zero. Here's one of the fundamental concepts of physics. If you have a net force that is not zero, you've got an acceleration. You have to. And that's where centripetal comes in. It's centripetal acceleration. It's like you're pulling, the, the, the ball is pulling Gs is really what you what, what's going on here in a sense. So therefore, we have centripetal acceleration if, if, because the force is changing direction. It's changing speed, but it is changing the direction, right? So therefore, we have tension in this case, which uh, equals the M. Now, there's an equation for centripetal acceleration. What do you suppose is in that equation? The faster you go, the greater the centripetal acceleration because the greater because the greater the force, right? The greater the tension. It depends upon the, the speed, and it also depends upon the radius. The triple acceleration is V squared divided by the radius, okay? So therefore, in that equation, we'd have the tension equals the mass times the V squared divided by R, the speed squared divided by the radius of motion squared, okay? And, and uh, we can solve for tension if we, if we know it, what the speed and the radius were. It'd be easy to do. Now, I want to carry all that on now to a bigger, what, we're, what we really want to do here. We want to get the mass of the Earth, don't we? And I get the mass of any planet, okay? As long as I can do, the speed of a satellite going around that planet and its radius of motion from this equation that we're doing, circular motion, okay? Let's write the equation again down here. I want to do, come on down here just a little bit. So we have, write the equation again. Mass times centripetal acceleration. And we have a satellite going around the Earth. Here's your satellite here, okay? And here's the Earth is going to be the, the inner circle. And this erase of the motion right here, you know, if I could draw, erase the motion right here, and that's your R as it goes around. Let's say it's going around counterclockwise. It doesn't make any difference, but let's say it's going around counterclockwise, okay? So we have the Earth there. Here's the mass of the Earth. It's going to be the mass of satellite out here. Okay. Now, it's going around with the speed V. And let's, let's just say this is going to be the International Space Station, because I know the speed at the International Space Station, and I also know its height above the Earth, and more importantly, I know what the radius of motion is about the center of the Earth, and that's the R, okay, which is in the equation, correct? For centripetal acceleration. All right. Now, so we have this then on the right side. We're still going to have M times centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R, correct? Right, like that. There we go. What goes on the left side? What force causes an acceleration? Or excuse me. What force causes a satellite to go around the Earth? Why didn't it just go straight? You know, in other words, why didn't you just go flying off like that right there, just at a, at a tangent? Because the force of gravity pulls it towards the Earth all the time, doesn't it? Situation right here, gravity is always towards the center of the Earth, isn't it? Towards the center, the force of gravity, right? Always towards the center. Okay. If I did it over here, then the force of gravity would be towards the center over here, wouldn't it? It is a centripetal force. It is the only force on the satellite, okay? So there, it is towards center. So therefore, the force of gravity is your only centripetal force, and equals m times v squared over r. Now, we're getting there. But what's the force of gravity? You can't say m times little g because you're not on the surface of the Earth, correct? So what do we use in place of the force of gravity if you do have something like a satellite? What's the force of gravity between the Earth the satellite. Well, that comes from what? Newton's law of universal gravitation. 
And that equation looks like this right here, F of G equals big G, that's mass one, mass two, and mass two over R squared. And that, where R is the distance between the center of the mass of the Earth, the center of mass of the sun, okay? Now, in this case, mass one is gonna be what? Now let's do this down here. Mass one, let's call it the mass of the Earth. We'll call mass two the mass of satellite, okay? Divided by R squared. All right, that's your F of G. But what's that big G all about? You know how little G, when you do M times little G for, for the, the force of gravity uh, on a mass when it's on the surface of the Earth, instead of doing 9.81, big G is a, is a much different number. It's a much smaller number, okay? Big G is going to be is the G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. All right. And every time you use that, uh, that, that equation there and use big G, big G always has that number, just like little G is always 9.81. Big G is always this number every time you use that equation. Okay. Now, Back to our equation here, force of gravity does equal this. It's going to be G, big G, the mass of the Earth, is mass of the satellite, divided by the radius of motion squared, or the distance between the two, which is also the radius of motion, right? Okay. Times the mass, M, times V squared, oh, all right, I'm going to stop here a minute. What's this M right here? What is that M right there? Is the mass of the Earth or the mass of the satellite, do you suppose? In this equation, always that mass right here is always going to be the mass of the object that's going around in a circle. In this case, it's going to be what? Mass of the satellite. Now, let's stop for a minute there. Let's see what we got here. I can tell you, I want to solve for the mass of the Earth, don't I? So I need to isolate that as my variable. We're going to do some algebra now, correct? What would be my first step? There's a number of ways. There's a number of ways in which you can do this. I can see right off the mass uh, of the side does cancel out, right? It's on both sides, so it cancels out. So zoom. Let's try that again. It's going to be boom and boom. It's gone. It does cancel out. Let's rewrite the equation. I want to keep this nice and clean. What would be my next step to do here to gradually isolate the mass of the Earth there? Uh, let's pull that R squared up. So multiply both sides by R squared. Do one side, do the other side. It's called algebra. What you do to one side, you must, you must do to the other. So these cancel out, don't they? And what's R squared divided by R? What's this divided by that? The twos cancel out by the R. That R cancels out one of those, so you have this. You have V squared times R. Okay. Now, Rewrite again, clean up a little bit more. We have this. We have big G times the mass of the Earth equals V squared times R. And, when, uh, and once again, what's the last thing I do to get the mass of the Earth isolated? I have to divide that G over. And these cancel. And lo and behold, this is the mass of the Earth right there, isn't it? Let's plug it in. Now, I have some numbers here. That we're, we're going to plug in there, see what the mass of the Earth is. And clean this up a little bit again. I will do the mass of the Earth. It does equal. V squared. Uh, v here is going to be that space station is going 7,660 meters per second. Pretty fast. I'm going to square that times the radius of the motion. And the radius of motion from the, from the satellite to the center of the Earth, in this case, would be 6. Uh, 6.78 times 10 to the sixth meters, all right? Divided by big G. Big G is going to be 6, 6, 7 times 10 to the minus 11. Yeah, it's supposed to be an 11 there. That's an 11, guys. All right. You plug all that in, you will get this. 5.96 times 10 to 24 kilograms. All 
right? Now, in reality, it's 5.97, but uh, that's due to rounding. But I want you to look at that answer there. Is that not amazing? We, and we it's easy, fairly easy with our technology to get the, the speed of, of, of a space station or speed of a satellite going around the Earth and also to get the race of motion, our technology today. By that, we can get the mass of the Earth. Is that not incredible? And you could also do the same thing. You, you can get the mass of the sun. How would you get the mass of the sun here? Well, instead of, if you if you go back here, this E, the mass of the Earth, it, it, the, the main, this would be the mass of the sun here that you're trying to find, right? And was a satellite going around the sun? It would be the Earth, wouldn't it? So the M2 would be mass of the Earth, wouldn't it? Other than that, the problem is pretty much the same. It's just the numbers changed a little bit, correct? A very powerful equation. All right. Hope you got that. Can give you some homework. You have a good day.